Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. And today we've already got a figure drawn on the canvas that I've drawn on with chalk. Uh, just a basic outline of the uh, character in this painting. And I've also created a bit of a, a cross in there and then another line to show where the horizon line about is, where the cross is. And then the other line is the tops of the trees. And uh, I have got a photo, reference photo, but I've changed the composition to fit my needs, basically. And I do that a lot because I want this character to pop a bit more. I've moved her a little bit. So let's uh, get this going. So I've pre-painted. <laughs> The background and I've painted some ground color and uh, now I've got some magenta and a bit of cobalt blue mixed together to make my dark purpley color it's actually perfect color it, it worked out perfect as a color mix and I'm just blocking in the shapes the basic shapes just blocking it in getting it down getting it ready for the happy highlights <laughs> and I say happy highlights because I enjoy doing highlights a lot um, in fact I like doing the, the darkest darks and the lightest lights a lot <laughs> because it really makes the painting Im improve dramatically so I've got a, uh, a drink on the go Got a latte, or is it a latte? Hmm. Latte, latte. Hmm. Not sure, <laughs> but it's nice anyway. And uh, and yeah, so I thought I'll do a painting of a figure, and I'll make that the main focus of this episode. Um, just to let you know, the background was painted in quite loosely. The strokes are loose, happy strokes. <laughs> And uh, and I wanted to show you that you can do more than just trees and water and whatever. You can paint people in your paintings. And I'm going to start adding things <laughs> that you probably never thought you'd be able to paint. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. And then you will be able to do it. You will be able to add characters in your paintings you will be able to add horses <laughs> cars it doesn't matter whatever it is you can paint it it's you just have to look at it as paint it placed and matched color wise in the correct place and sometimes it's made up so you make up your own colours, you make up your own character, and everything just falls into place like that. But a little tip. <laughs> I'm going to have a drink before I tell you this tip. So an important tip, and this was known by the masters, when you're painting um, characters in a painting, especially in a place that you've say done a sketch if you've been outside and you're sketching away there's always probably going to be one person come by now that one person that comes by is going to be wearing the right clothes for the area the right clothes for the time of year the right footwear the right everything so they're the people you want to be using in your painting for that area now <laughs> you're you're thinking to yourself oh but i painted a painting i want to put a person in and uh, there was nobody around or i got this picture off the internet and i want to put someone in there but now you've said that i don't know what clothes to put on them <laughs> so then you have to start thinking oh what time of, time of year it is What's the weather like? What would you wear in those conditions? 
and uh, you can be experimental then. But the, the greatest tip is, if you're painting out and about, if you're taking reference photos yourself for paintings, which I advise, then uh, if you see some people around, they're the people you want in your painting. <laughs> it's an interesting tip, isn't it? I was reading it um, in a uh, book about John Constable, one of my uh, favourite artists, and uh, he got that given that tip by somebody else, another painter. And uh, ever since I've read it, I've always thought about it. Because it is important, really. Because if, if, if I painted someone in shorts, <laughs> carrying a beach ball, I know, we're, we're going a bit overboard with a, a beach ball, but it wouldn't look right. <laughs> or if it was really snowy and cold and then you put someone again walking around say with their coat off generally it wouldn't happen it does happen I've seen it but generally it doesn't happen so I think it's really interesting that <laughs> I never thought of that until I read it so the legs Really, really, really <laughs> struggled with these legs. And uh, the reason why, I couldn't get in my head the anatomy of them. I couldn't work out in my head exactly the anatomy of the legs. Even though I'm painting them, I've got a picture that I can use to paint them. But if you have the anatomy in your head as well as the visual stimulus to do your painting then uh, it makes it a lot easier. Your, your brush strokes become more um, direct and knowledgeable. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do at the moment, improve my figure painting and improve my realism in people, in shapes of people. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm trying to do that as well in my miniatures. If you're following my Facebook, you'll know that I've been painting a few miniatures, just a <laughs> quick example. Oh, this guy walking as well. Really good fun to paint these miniature miniatures. I mean, they're, they're hard work. <laughs> I don't deny it because they're quite small. And the, the, you do a brush stroke slightly off, it totally ruins it. So, but at the same time, it's great fun. <laughs> it's, it's a challenging, fun thing to do. I'm not sure if this will show up, but there's a load of little people on this one. Don't know if you can. Don't know if that's seeable. <laughs> <clears throat> but if you want to check them out, I've got them on my Instagram and on my Facebook feed. You can check them out there. Might be something you want to do yourself. So this blocking in, blocking in approach, you can use this approach for anything. Block in, say, a mid-tone or a dark tone, and do the whole thing, and then you just come in with highlights and shadows, and that's it. And <laughs> that technique is as simple as that. And I've done some portraits using that technique uh, of a... Uh, a mid-tone and then come in with darks and lights and I was shocked at what I could paint I mean <laughs> I did portraits that I never thought I could paint using that technique I'm, I'm not even joking <laughs> it was one of those moments when you paint you sit back and look at it and you think what the heck did I paint that I'm like could I paint that oh, it was amazing it was one of those moments where I thought, I'm really starting to become a painter. I'm really starting to be able to paint. And then the next day, I did a really bad painting and thought, eh, maybe not. <laughs> but we keep trying. I ain't going to give up. 
I love painting. It, I feel I feel like I am a painter, and uh, I don't. I've always felt like I am a painter, which is a weird thing actually. I just feel like I'm a painter, and I can't escape it because whenever I try other stuff, I always come back to painting, <laughs> and I haven't not painted now for quite a while actually done quite a few years of consistency so it's starting to uh, pay off a little bit there you go look I, I was like I just can't get these legs right I can't get them right so I thought right I'll put the um, reference picture right up to the picture that I'm working on just to get closer because the knee look out Look at the um, negative space, and what I mean is the light between the legs. That's what I'm looking at when I'm doing this, looking at those light areas. Um, and then looking at darkness, because where the bag is, it's casting darkness there, and then around where the legs are. And I'm so, I keep trying to sit as far back as possible. I never paint up close anymore. I always paint at a distance because then I can see more. And I don't expect this painting of the girl in the picture to be a totally perfect. But I want to get the the sense of it, the um, essence of it, right as much as I can. I mean, I could, if I wanted, I could spend. Uh, ages on it and get it perfect and I know I could do it it would just take me a while <laughs> one of the things you can do like uh, acrylic paints you can wait for it to dry and then paint over it again there's another go with that reference it's a weird thing actually painting people because sometimes I'll do a few brush strokes and it'll be perfect. And I and I'm like, yes, I got it. And then other times you just can't seem to get it right. You just brush stroke after brush stroke and you're pulling your hair out, like, why isn't this working? What's going wrong? Why ain't it working? <laughs> it's quite amusing really. It's it just major challenge, isn't it? But yeah, don't be afraid to bodge a few paintings up. <laughs> We've got to do that. We've got to do that to learn. We can't not do that. So I just grabbed some burnt sienna and I'm uh, diluting the black into the burnt sienna. So what you do... <laughs> If you've got a colour that you don't want in a place, you dilute it away by uh, adding a load of that colour that's around it. And that, that's that's all you do. That's what I do. Or you can wait for it to dry and then just paint over it. But while it's still wet, a quick way of doing it is doing that. Just dilute it away. <laughs> see I'm trying to re remember what it looks like on the picture as I do that and then move it away and quickly look at what's wrong it's no easy feat I've got to be honest it ain't easy <laughs> it's hard work to do it but I think the more people you put in your paintings um, the easier it'll be well that's what I'm telling myself at the moment I'm telling myself just keep painting people just keep doing it and then it'll become easier and easier the more you do it and so I'm just going to start painting a lot of people so I did that with trees 
and I've done that with other things. Um, mainly trees, actually. <laughs> I painted a lot of uh, flowers as well and plants. And I got quite a lot better at painting little potted plants and things. And, uh, and they're very good at um, flowers and plants. Uh, if you've got a local garden centre and you fancy yourself selling paintings, <laughs> well, paint a few flowers and uh, the garden centre will probably have your paintings in their sale because they love them. So I'm really, we're really zoomed in now, and I painted a bit of white on the hair, but I forgot to start filming. <laughs> so I thought, oops. And then I thought, oh well, I better zoom in and show you what I've done. So I'm just putting a little bit of light. It's actually white and yellow ochre, and the background's wet still, so I can use my finger to blend any excess paint away. So yeah, this is the light that's hitting her, hitting the hair. You'll notice the ground, I've put a lot of strokes in there. A lot of different colours, versions of the ground colour really. Something Monet would say. Um, something he said is that lots of different brush strokes makes a painting more interesting. And look at all the different brush strokes in the ground. It makes it more interesting. There's thin ones, thicker ones, some of them are almost like splodges. <laughs> so we've got some of the uh, magenta and the cobalt and a bit of light in there, a bit of white. There's a little bit of the uh, raw sienna where the hair is as well. But what I'm looking for is the, the most basic of strokes that will read as the arm or the hood or the hair and the light hitting that side there. I'm really trying to... <laughs> Little blobs there. Now I'm trying to pull some of that paint out to just get that shape in the leg. So I did film this whole painting and uh, I wondered what I would do with the video file and I thought well it's more about her, so I thought I'd make this video. But let me know if you want to see the full video. I can put it up somewhere. I'm not sure about where yet, but if a few people want to see it, you can. It will be just um, video. There'll be no audio. But if that's something you're interested in, just let me know. And I'll uh, put it on somewhere. So I'm just putting in a few marks on the ground and having a look at the whole shape again. <laughs> just looking and looking and looking and then mixing my paints and then coming back and getting that bit of light, bit of light around there. Bit where the head, the head is and the hat. doing a lot of um, paint my paintings as well now have a lot more paint on them <laughs> I'm just c catching the light there on the bag see it, that brush stroke shape there little curves they're really important because they 
show the curve of the bag. Um, always think like that when you're doing your brush strokes. If you want to create a, a shape, an illusion of a, a roundedness, the brush stroke going round, it really makes a difference. It really does. That roundedness. Catching the light there. Yeah, I was saying, I'm using a lot of paint now, a lot of oil paint on my canvas. And the reason is, I'm just getting a bit of dark there just to <laughs> match it. Yeah, I'm using a lot more paint because when I was in the museums, I noticed that there was a lot of paint on the canvases, especially like uh, the Impressionists, even like Constable Turner, Monet. And they all had like a lot of paint on, even Sargent as well. He had used a lot of paint. So I, I um, revisited my own work and hang, hang your paintings on the wall and have a look at them and then think about what the museum ones were like <laughs> and try and uh, see if you can get closer to them. So I'm just adding a little bit more light where the hair sort of flicks. Try and outline a little bit of light there. This line of brush is pretty old. <laughs> I've had it ages. It's sort of splitting. Getting that light in there. Yeah, I think it's really important to hang your own paintings up on the wall in your living room or somewhere and have a look at them. A bit more light there. And then you can really um, judge them for yourself. Ask yourself what improvements you can make. Now what I'm doing here is I'm introducing the colours from the surrounding area into the character put the actual colors of that sort of uh, brownish raw sienna color on the bag on on the hat connecting uh, the character to the surrounding areas by doing that that's what i think anyway <laughs> is anyone else itching to do a painting watching this <laughs> or is it just me <laughs> I'm losing the uh, light in the middle there's sometimes I think um, I paint for too long and I don't stop and learning how to stop and paint, so, I mean, just start painting and then wait the next day and then come back fresh and have another go. And that, that's what I did. I, I thought, right, I need to uh, give myself some time to freshen my mind <laughs> and have another go. doesn't worry me if it if you're doing another layer on oils let's say you're doing a painting and you're painting to dry when you come to it next and and then all you need to do to stop your painting from 
cracking and any other <laughs> issues you have maybe the paint just falls off <laughs> yeah to stop that from happening you just have to make sure your layers on top have a bit more oil in than the layers underneath and I'm talking only a little you only need it to be a drop or two thinner on top with oil that's what they mean by fat over lean technique you, the more layers you put on the fatter you want them to be which just means more oil simple as that <laughs> oil, oil painting just seems really complicated but it isn't I know there's artists out there that still think you have to be a master painter to paint with oils. <laughs> I don't understand that philosophy, really. I'm still working on those legs, the leg shapes. <laughs> I've, I've, even now, after I've completed this painting, I still think I could do a bit more work on the legs. <laughs> I've got to be honest. You know, as painters, though, we can be a bit perfectionist sometimes, and sometimes, <laughs> not always, but sometimes, that perfectionist streak can create unbelievable problems in a painting. <laughs> you could uh, get to the point where you sit back, you have a look and you think, ah, oh, that's not a bad painting. I think I've done all right there. And then you do a few more brush strokes and then a few more and then a few more and then you messed it up. You lose the freshness, the the coolness of the, the strokes. All your brush strokes start disappearing and... You blend it all away <laughs> and then you've lost it and that, that does happen there's a few leaves um, on the ground so you can't actually see the boot that well because of all the leaves so I'm trying to uh, leave some of that <laughs> leave some of the leaves but yeah the ground has a lot of texture so I wanted to portray that with my paint give it a texture and then the trees I wanted them to look a little bit smoother so again I tried to portray that with my paint always thinking about that now about the texture of things like the smoothness of the material or the fullness of a material I think about that and then as I paint it hopefully I, it comes across I know uh, some people say well you know painting's an illusion you just paint what you see and then everything else happens you don't have to think of the textures and stuff you, if you was doing something you can just paint it and it will be like that <laughs> So, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? For me, I, f I have to think like that. <laughs> I, I can't not do it like that. I, um, my mind, uh, I like to think about that. So that extra highlight that I just put in there, it's just brushed on. You can see through it. You can see that the paint is quite dryly put on almost scumbled but again trying to get that feel of the mm, the material but I think you could imagine her walking up walking away from us now I could definitely imagine that. And 
I'm adding a little blues. <laughs> little bits of blue light here and there. There's still some yellow, some colour from around the area in there as well. I haven't taken it completely. Something I've started to realise as well, being loose uh, means a lot more than I thought. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, I added more light there. What I originally thought was a loose painter just uh, does a quick study kind of thing of something, but it's more than that. It's the ability to... Uh, stop as well um, like when I was looking at some of Rembrandt's paintings in London and the National Gallery there's a a looseness that's well, it's beyond what I can do <laughs> and here's me making a mess <laughs> yeah, it's still wet so it doesn't matter I can still manipulate a little bit. I wasn't getting the angle right still. Yeah, and there's a there's a looseness in Rembrandt strokes that are well, way beyond me. But I'm learning that because of his wealth of knowledge in painting, he could, like I was saying about thinking about the anatomy when you're painting, if you really think think anatomy and re and when you're observing as well you could your knowledge would be dulled <laughs> and what I mean by that is you've got your anatomy knowledge and then you've got your visual knowledge and because you know what the anatomy is like your visual knowledge of what you can see then you've got a almost x-ray eyes in a sense of what you're seeing so your visual knowledge is doubled <laughs> so it is worth doing it's worth looking at books and things and uh, learning a bit about anatomy and muscles and uh, it does help I, I, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it <laughs> it really does help I'm not sending you on a wild goose chase <laughs> And uh, for a long time, I've not, I didn't realize that. I just didn't realize. And then uh, I started doing it because I thought, oh, what am I missing in my artistic skill? And I thought, well, I could paint a good tree. <laughs> but could I paint the anatomy? And I thought, well, I can't. And I've been to a lot of life drawing classes. I really have been to a lot. And uh, I, I ask myself if it helped, if it made me a better painter. And I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I suppose it has. I suppose what it did is it taught me how to quickly work out shapes and scale because obviously you've got to try and draw the model at the right scale <laughs> so the arms aren't too long oh <laughs> this has just gone off now right, let's get to the end <laughs> so i've added a little bit more purple into the painting um, so the colour of the girl's jacket is now in the painting, on the trees, in places. It's, it's, it's um, unified the painting a little bit. Um, the leg probably still needs a bit of work. I'm undecided. I do quite like it as a person walking. Um, the other thing I did is I added a little bit more dark in the ground here and there, a bit more dark. And uh, But hopefully this <laughs> video helps you. It gives you uh, an insight into my thoughts anyway on art 
and my own personal painting um, um, studying and uh, hopefully it showed you an idea of how to paint a person in your painting if you've always wondered how this is a great one for beginners to uh, see how you do it so thanks very much for watching this episode and don't forget to subscribe comment and like please always always click that like because then i'll have more likes than dislikes <laughs> So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye.